Another type of chi-square goodness of fit test is when you have a binomial distribution or you want to test that your data follows a binomial distribution. So again, if you haven't seen the previous videos on uniform distribution and normal distribution, I would recommend you have a look at those because that's where I, at least the first video for uniform distribution, that's where I explain the main definitions. Um, so I'm going to go through this example, and um, it's a good example where we're also facing uh, expected values less than 5, which is something I also talked about in the normal distribution video. So um, this question will go through it. Uh, you can pause the video and read through it. I won't do that uh, for now. So let's look at part A. We have a the binomial expansion with three trials and a probability of 0.75. And it asks us to find the expected probabilities of 0, 1, 2, and 3 seeds germinating. So the way to find the expected uh, probabilities is just to use the calculator. So what you're going to do is go to... Um, so you're going to go to second, virus or distribution, and then click on binomial PDF, which is all the way in the bottom. If you're doing normal distribution, you're doing normal CDF. But for binomial, you're going to do binomial PDF. So just be careful about that. And then you're going to be faced with this page. So you're going to click on three trials. So that's the first um, argument here. And then the P is going to be 0 0.75. And then you're going to put 0 for the X value. And you're going to write 0, and then repeat it, write 1, and then repeat it again, write 2, and then repeat it again, write 3. So for the uh, expected value for binomial expansion, the x value keeps on changing. So what you're going to get is something like this. So I just repeated the same thing, and I've just replaced the last argument with 0, 1, 2, 3, which corresponds to here, 0, 1, 2, 3, the number of seeds germinating. And what we got was the probability uh, here for every so the expected probability so uh, how many um, number of seeds so zero number of seeds germinating the probability of that happening would be 0 0.015625 and so on so we have all these values now formally you would write them as such so the probability that the seed of we'll just use s it doesn't have to be s but we're talking about seed so the seed is equal to zero is this seed is equal to 1 is this, seed is equal to 2 is this, and so on. So we have four significant figures here for everyone. So that's for part A. We did the expected probability. They're still not asking us for a chi-square goodness of fit test, but you can see that all of these questions will lead up to a chi-square goodness of fit test. So part B asks you to write the table of expected frequency. Now this is just the expected probability, not the frequency. To find the expected frequency for the binomial expansion, so we're going to create a table here, and instead of observed frequency, we're going to do expected frequency. Your first step is to find the sum of the frequency. So we're going to add all the numbers up, or we can find it from the question itself, so it's SAS 50. And once we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to take our probabilities and we're going to multiply the probabilities with our uh, total frequency. So as a formula, you can think of it as f multiplied by p, where f is always the same thing, it's the sum of the frequency, and p is your is the values you found. This is the p is from the calculator. So these are given. So this is what you need to what you found. If the question didn't ask you, like in part A and stuff, you have to do it on your own. So once we have that, then we get the probabilities, and this will be our expected frequency. So now I can create a table called expected frequency table, and if I reveal all the values, this is what I get. So I just took the calculator and I did um, 50 times uh, the probabilities and so on. So that will be the expected frequency. Um, so part C now asks you to state whether there are expected values than, than 5. And we can see that. We can see it's in uh, 0. So we have expected value less than 5. And as mentioned in the normal distribution um, question, uh, you're not allowed to do a chi-square test with expected values less than 5. If that happens, then you have to combine different... Um, groups together. You have to combine the categories together to make sure that the expected value is less than 5. So we're going to do the same thing here. Now that's something either that might be avoidable in a question or um, you will be expected to do it in an IA. So if you look at part C, 
we have all these values. So what we wanted to do, if we look at the previous table, is just the zero that's causing us issue, that's the less than five. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna combine these two together. So we're gonna add the expected frequencies and the, the, the uh, category on top is just gonna be zero and one. So that's just to in indicate the probability of zero uh, and, or one. So we just added them together. We added the expected frequency. We did this plus this. And these will stay the same because we have no issues with them. So then we need to do the degree of freedom. So now instead of four categories, I'm left with three categories. And the formula for the degree of freedom is n minus one, uh, which is three minus one. So not four, just be careful. It's gonna be three minus one, which is two. Now for part E, this is where the test actually happens. So determine the results of a goodness of fit test. So they just want the chi-square value or the um, p-value. The way they set up the question is that they always tell you significance level as well, and they always tell they always tell you what type of distribution you want it to fit into. So the, the rest of the sentence is just formalities, but you have to read through it to know all the important information. So it just means that we have to go through the um, goodness chi-square goodness of fit test. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to write the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the number of germinating seeds follow a binomial distribution, and the alternative is that the number of germinating seeds does not follow a binomial distribution. So that's what the question wants us to see. And that's how, that's the nature of a, a chi-square goodness of fit test. You want to see if your data fits a certain distribution. So how do we do it now? Well, I've, as you can see, I did my table, I rewrote my table here. We also did the same thing for the observed frequency. So we, because we combined these two categories, we just added these two together to get 15. So just be aware of that. And you only do it with uh, when you have expected values less than five, just combine it with another category to make sure that it's not less than five. Um, it could be any of the categories, just as long as it's next to it, so adjacent to it. So we have, um, this is our observed frequency, this is our expected frequency. So what we're going to do in our calculator is we're going to go to lists, and L1 is going to be the observed, and L2 will be the expected frequency. So these already are calculated. Then we're going to go to stat and calculate. Sorry, stat and then test. And we're going to go all the way down to a goodness of fit test. Be careful, not the chi-square test. And then we're going to put our L1, our L2, and we're going to write our degree of freedom, which is 2. And once we've done that, then we press calculate, and we're going to get the chi-square value and p-value. So the question just wants you to write these out. That will be just for part E. Now, to finish the test, we're going to talk about, it tells you that the critical value for this test is 5.991, and they want you to state the conclusion. Um, so this question is laid out nicely, it kind of does everything for you and what you have to do in an IA, or if the question doesn't have all these parts, you are expected to find the value and then do the conclusion as well, especially if they ask you for the conclusion in part E. But they're asking us in a different part. So. Uh, what you're going to do is you, you can do it two ways. Either compare your chi-square value with the, criti with the critical value, or you compare the p-value with the significance level. And the significance level was given here, so the 5%. And the critical value is here, and this is our chi-square, and this is our p-value. So uh, we have the... We have the chi-square is 8.43, and critical value is 5.991. So I can see that my chi-square is bigger than my critical value. And then if I want the p-value, I can say that the p-value is less than the significance level, and the significance level has, has to be converted to a decimal, so 0 0.05. So this is what I have, and if you remember the rules, or you can refer to your notes to remember the rules, once you have this, then you have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So you can say we reject uh, null hypothesis and we accept the alternative and you can precisely just reiterate what you wrote in the alternative so I can just take uh, this exact sentence and say um, 
So therefore, the number of germinating seeds does not follow a binomial distribution. And you can kind of see that with the observed and the expected frequency. As you can see, the numbers are quite, especially for the first one, the numbers are quite far from each other. So this is what you're expected to see if your data followed a binomial distribution, and this is if uh, what well, you got. So the numbers are quite far except for the third one. So it does not follow a binomial distribution.